All right, this is the lesson for week number two. Uh, the topic for this week is basic logic gates. So here we go. What we're going to cover today, we're going to do a little bit of a review from last week. Uh, and we're going to do this week's lesson, which is logic gates, and a couple of little practice problems and scenarios from that. So reviewing last week, we talked about the decimal number system, the base 10 number system. Uh, we talked about what that what that means, how we have, basically if we look at the number, the number like 5623, 5623, how this breaks up into a ones, a tens, that's one tens, hundreds and thousands thousands column uh, that's the way that number is broken up uh, and this is basically representative as 10 to the power of 0 10 to the power of 1 10 to the power of 2 and 10 to the power of 3 and that's basically the way all of our number systems work so even when we get into working with binary uh, that is still the same pattern that we follow there this is a twos column, sorry, this is the ones column, the twos column, this is the fours column, this is the eighths column when we do binary because we are dealing with two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, two to the power of two, which is four, two to the power of three, which is eight. Okay, so that's the way our binary system works. You can tell us the binary number here because the super the subscript of a two down here. When we're writing numbers in base ten, you should always have it's assumed, but you would have a subscript of a ten down there to indicate that you're in the base ten system. Uh, we talked about some different things with data types. So remember that. Uh, 32 bits together make up a word, and then within that word, those bits, uh, an individual item in here, so an individual one or a zero, that is called a bit or a binary digit. Then we have four bits together. We can group four bits together. We call that a nibble. A nibble is four bytes together. Eight bits together forms a byte. And then if we have 16 bits together, that is going to make up, we have the upper and lower part of the byte. And then on the very far left, the most significant bit, the very far right, the least significant bit. And we call that most significant least significant because the most significant, this is the one that has the greatest influence on the, the magnitude of the number. So this is the ones column over here. This is the, what would this be? The uh, two to the power of 15 number. So that is much, much more magnitude than just a one. So that is the most significant bit. We talked about converting binary to decimal and how to do that. Basically when we look at a binary number, we're talking about how many ones, how many twos, how many fours, how many sixes, how many eights, how many sixteens, how many thirty twos are in this number. Sorry, ones, twos, fours, eights, sixteens, thirty twos, and sixty fours uh, make up this number. We can add all those together to come up with the value for that. And then the reverse of that, basically going through and taking a number such as example here 12 we take that number and we keep on dividing it so we take our 12 divided by 2 that yields a quotient of 6 with a remainder of 0 so the 0 makes up our rightmost digit we're going to basically keep on breaking this down like this we then take that 6 divide it by 2 that's going to give us 3 with a remainder of 0 that zero goes over here. We then take three, divide by zero, 
that it's going to go one time with a remainder of one. So one with a remainder of one. That remainder goes here. And we have one divided by two. That is going to go zero times with a remainder of one. So the one goes up here. Once we get this zero occurring, we know that we are finished. Okay, so this, so if we get the binary number 1100, binary 2 is equal to 12. That is how we convert from, uh, this would be going from binary to decimal. That should actually say binary to decimal. Sorry, no, decimal to binary, that is correct. I am wrong there. That is actually correct. Okay, decimal to binary. Converting a decimal number to binary. All right, we talked about hexadecimal, uh, how to use hexadecimal numbers. We talked about ASCII numbers. We talked about BCD and how to convert to and from BCD. And now let's move on to the lesson for this week. So this week we we're talking about logic gates. So logic gates are the basic building blocks of any kind of logic circuits. There's three basic types. We're gonna learn what these are today. We have an AND gate, an OR gate, and a gate that we're going to call either a NOT or an inverter gate. So this is the AND gate. It looks like this. We basically draw that. That is basically a two input AND gate. It looks like that. That's how we represent it. And what that means in words, we're going to say we have two inputs going into this and one output. We would say if A is on and B is on, then the output will also be on. So when we talk about on and off, what we're talking about is our input signal or output signal. Is it on? That can also mean is it high or off, meaning low. We could also say true or false. That basically means the same thing. We could say it's a value of 1 or a value of 0. That's also the same thing. We might uh, refer to it as saying yes or no. So these are all kind of interchangeable terminology we'll use in this course for these different conditions. So we can also generate what's called a truth table for this gate. So if we have two different inputs, there is four different combinations of inputs that we could have. And then this truth table will show us what the results would be for each of those four different combinations. So like we said before, this produces an, an output of one or on or true if both A and B are also one and true. So if A was zero, so if A is zero and B is zero, this will generate zero as an output. So basically if we have zero and zero here, this will combine together to give you a zero. And this operator here, where we say this here, this is the Boolean algebra sign for and. We can say the same thing with uh, Look at the next line of the truth table. If we say 0 and 1, 0 and 1, so we, we refer to this as A is off and B is on, 
that will give us this is still B, AB is off. Okay, because they both have to be on for our, or in order for us to produce a 1 over here. So that's this line of the truth table. This will be the same, this combination here, a 1 and a 0 will also produce a 0. The only combination that produces a 1 in this case is 1 and 1. So A and B both on will produce a 1 as a result. So this is how the AND gate works. Now how many rows do we get in our truth table based on how many combinations of inputs you have, or basically how large of a binary number can you create with that many bits? So you'll notice there, two inputs, two to the power of two, is equal to four, one, two, three, four lines in the truth table required. So that's basically how many combinations of inputs can you create. That's what we're showing here. And like I said, Boolean algebra, the asterisk means and, and A and B. So we represent that as A and B. That is the Boolean expression for A and B. These gates can have several inputs together. So this is A and B and C all together. And like we said before, the truth table for this would have to have how many inputs do we have? We have three inputs. So we have two to the power of three inputs. That equals eight. So we need to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines in a truth table altogether. Or if I asked you how big of a binary number can you create with only three bits, that would be the value of eight. Okay, and this would be the truth table for A and B and C. Again, with the AND, you'll notice if you ever get a zero in here, you get a zero in your result. So if there's ever a zero, so we have a zero, a zero, a zero, a zero, a zero, a zero, any of these zeros going to give us a zero result. If we get one, 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 one's all the way across the board, that's the only combination that produces a one as a result. That is the AND gate. The OR gate. Works pretty similar. This is how we represent the OR gate. So when we draw that, basically curved on the back like this. One output, two inputs. And the way that we talk about this with words, we would say if A is on or if B is on, the output will be on. So as you can guess for the truth table for this, if you have a one in either A or B, you're going to get a one as a result. So if we have this combination, that gives us a 1. So that's this. If we have this combination, that will also give us a 1. If we have this combination, that's they're both on. That also gives us a 1. We only need 1 on, but 2 also does it. The only thing it does not give us a result of 1 is if we have both of these off. That gives us a 0. So it's almost the exact opposite of the AND gate. And you'll notice the, the plus sign here. So A or B is how we represent that. You can have multiple inputs again. Again, we'll need eight of these all together. And you can see again, you will get a one here 
with anything that has a 1 in it. So if there's at least one signal that is on, on any of those inputs, it'll give you that. The only thing it does not give us is if you have every single one of them off. And the third gate we're going to talk about is the NOT gate. The NOT or the inverter, and basically what this says is that whatever your signal goes into it, if A is on, the output will be off. If A is off, the output will be on. So this basically just flips that signal. So if we have a 0 over here, we're going to have a 1 over here. If we have a 1 over here, we get a 0 over here. It just flips the signal. It is an inverter or not gate. And the Boolean expression for that, the one we commonly use, is just a bar. We call this bar, putting a line over top of it. That just means the opposite of A. So these gates are not useful on their own. They are useful when we combine them together to create logic circuits that perform a task we actually want them to do. So for example, what would this circuit do? So we can kind of work backwards with the Boolean expression on this. So we can look at this and say, okay, this signal here, that is A. This signal here is B. This signal here is C. So B, going through an inverter, coming out the other side, is going to B, will be B bar. Right, so B comes in, inverted B comes out. And then this gate here, this is an AND gate. So A, AND, not B, together. That's what comes out of here. So we call this A, A and B not. This one down here, this is also an AND. So this would be B not and C. Now this gate here, that is an OR. So the final expression coming out here, because what we're looking at here is to create a, a Boolean expression. These together. OR B not B not and C, like that. So that's how we would work through that. You can see this order here. They reverse the order on this from the way I wrote it on the previous screen. The order doesn't matter on these. So how do we create a truth table for this? First of all, we would need to have three inputs all together. So if Three, how many rows do we need? Answer for that. What is 2 to the power of 3? It is equal to 8, so we need 8 rows altogether on our truth table. So let's look at this. So there's a couple ways we could work through this. One would be we could just plug in numbers here and see what we get at the end. So if we go through that process. We go through here and we could say let's put in a zero, a zero, and a zero. So zero comes in, a one comes out. A zero and a one go into this gate. We know the only thing that produces a one out of here is a one and a one going into this. So this would produce a zero coming out. A one and a zero, same thing. That's going to produce a zero coming out. And with the OR, that's going to produce a 0 and 0 on an OR, produces a 0. So we would know that this one here, that gives us a 0. So we could basically repeat that process. Going all 
the way through here. The next one, we're going to say a is a zero, b is a zero, c is a one, that's a one, that's a zero. This is going to give us a zero again. Here we now have a one and a one coming in. That's going to give us a one on the way out. And a zero and a one or together. That actually yields us a one. Okay, so we can repeat that process going through. And we should get that as our results for these combined logic gates. All right, so that is how we put together logic gates. Those are our three basic logic gates, the AND, the OR, and the, uh, the inverter. And that is how we can combine a couple logic gates together and try to solve for them. Okay, so let's do a couple practice questions and little applications here. Uh, first of all, Let's look at a practical application of binary numbers. So this is our lab. This is our PLC, a piece of automation we have in our PLC lab. This is a lab that you'll do in PLC part two. This is from a couple of years ago. But you'll see these little pallets going around on this assembly line. This is the PLC Part 2 course. Now one thing you'll notice with these pallets the pallets themselves we need to identify what pallet they are. All the pallets are unique or you could have unique parts on each one. We want to have a method of identifying a actual number associated with each of these individual pallets. When I say pallet, I mean a little, this little plastic base that travels around on the conveyor system. So what we have here, you'll notice that these little plugs that are inside each of the pallets. Now these ones here, these ones, that's metal. This white one here. That one is plastic. Now what we've got go along with this, we have three switches here that are connected to our PLC, so our, our control system. These switches connect to them. And we have basically something that's called bit 0, bit 1, and bit 2. So what these switches do is they actually read, they detect the presence of metal. Okay? So right now, when this pallet comes into this station, this first switch will be off because there's going to be no metal here. This piece is plastic. This switch here, when that touches up here, that one's going to be on. And this switch here will also be on. Okay. So you'll notice that each of these pallets is different. So if this was to come into, into the station, the way this gets read, this one will be read as that combination of inputs. This one will be read as, so that's off, off, on, because it's plastic, plastic, metal. So we get no signal, no signal, signal on our metal detecting switches. This one's going to read like that. This one's going to read like that. And this one's going to read like that. And then what we do in our code is we can very simply say this is pallet number zero, this is pallet number two, this is pallet number one, this is pallet number 
four. And this is palette number six. Because what we've basically created is a binary code off those switches that indicate what palette number it is. Okay, so that is using three individual switches and metal or plastic plugs on each of these pallets that we can read to determine a binary number associated with each pallet so that we can actually identify and name the pallets when they come into station. So a couple questions for you here. Number one, how many unique pallets can we have in this system and why? And number two, if we had 25 unique pallets, how would you need to modify the system in order to accommodate that? So think about that for a second and then I'll give the answers. Okay, so the first one, how many unique pallets can we have? So you see here, we're obviously going up to six. If this one was metal, we would call that that would be 111, and we would call that pallet number 7. So basically we have three bits here, or 2 to the power of 3, equals 8 pallets altogether that we can read. So we can identify 8 individual pallets. If we had 25 unique pallets, how would the system need to be modified? So the first answer here. Let's say 8 because if we had 25 unique pallets, how we need to modify the system. So if we needed to read 25 different numbers, so 8 wouldn't do it. 16 would be our next number after that. That wouldn't do it. 32. We could read 32 unique numbers. That would do it. How many switches would we need to do that? So we would need... That's 2 to the 5. So our palette would need to look like... 5 unique little plugs and five unique switches that we were reading at each station in order to be able to determine a five-bit number. We're just going to say have have five switches at each station. So that would do it. So that's an application of how you would actually use some binary numbers uh, in a practical application doing PLC programming. Okay, let's move on. What is the truth table for this circuit? So let's look at this circuit here and determine the truth table for it. First of all, how many lines would this need to be? So let's look up here. We've got one, two, three. Three inputs. Two to the power of three equals eight. So we need eight lines altogether for it. So we can have Those are all different combinations. That's basically just counting from zero up to eight. So let's look at how we would solve this. 
let's start off with zero, zero, zero. So zero is right here. That's always going to yield a zero. That gives us a zero here. Zero, zero, zero. That's going to give us a zero and a zero there. This is going to give us a one. A one. That's still going to give us a zero. The AND gate we need everything on to get a signal through it. That's going to give us a one there. And this one here. That's also going to give us a zero. That's going to give us a zero. So zero, zero, zero gives us a zero. So let's try this again, changing our numbers. So we can keep going like that. We can also try some different methods. We can look to see, okay, what will actually produce a number here. We need one of these to come up as a one. So if any of these results here, if I get a one here, or a one here, or a one here, any of these will come up as a one. Let's look for these combinations that would actually do that. So what will produce a one off of this AND gate? The only thing that will do that here, if A, B, and C are all on, that will give us a one here, which would solve this no matter what these other ones are. So 1, 1, 1 would give us a 1. So let's just put that in here. We can solve that one right now. Same thing here. If we get a, a 1 and a 1 here, that will do, us, do it for us. So that would be B is a 1 and A is a 1. We don't care what C is. So anything where B is a 1 and A is a 0. So B is a 1, A is a 0. That's these two. And then this middle one here. A is a 1, C is a 1. So we had a 1, a 1, and a 0. That gives us a 1 here. So 1, 0, 1. That's this one. I think everything else is going to give us a zero. Okay, so that's another way to solve that there. Okay, and let's move on to this one here. I asked this question to people last year, and I think it was one person between two sections of the class that actually gave me an answer for this. So this is probably a little bit beyond what we're trying to do, but we'll see how we do it. So using basic logic gates, let's, this is actually applying what we're doing here. Design a home security system using the following parts. Let's say we have two switches that read high when a door is closed, one key switch that reads high when the system is armed, and one alarm horn that comes on to indicate that the system is tripped and you have your kit of parts. So let's think about what I'm asking you to do here. So let's look at this here. So let's have two switches. Let's call it switch one, switch two, and then a key switch we'll call K. And then our output is going to be this horn. So let's basically make up a table for this. Oops. Oh. 
So let's think about what we want to do here. So what causes the horn to come on? So first of all, the key switch reads high when the system is armed. So if the key switch is high, you have the possibility of the horn coming on. If the key switch is low, which is basically means the system is disarmed, you're never going to get the horn on. So anytime when the key switch is a zero, the horn is never going to come on. So the horn being on is basically a result of zero with the horn. The horn is our output. So we definitely need a one or an on with the key switch. Now the other thing is two switches that read high when a door is closed. So let's think about that. High equals one equals close. So we want to read so then a zero equals So a door open is basically our alarm condition. And this can be either one. We want to detect if you have two doors, if either door is open, we want the alarm to go off. So if we have a zero on either of these, we should go off. So if we have a one, on this, and we're armed, that'll be a one. Or if we have a one here, and we're armed, that'll be a one. Or if we have both of them open, and we're armed, that'll be a one. This one here, we're armed, but we're okay, because both doors are closed. That would be a zero. So this would be our truth table. What would this look like as an actual circuit? Because this is what we do in this course, is we basically think up circuits, and then we would actually build them, which is what we're going to be doing with our lab kits. So let's draw out what this would actually be. If we were to actually build this on a breadboard, so we could actually wire it and see it work and do something. So we have three inputs, and we basically want it to be on. We definitely need the key switch on, and we need either of the doors on to give us that. So we need key switch, and either of the door switches. This will be our OR. And our output is going to be this horn. So we have an OR. This is an OR gate. And sorry, We want these to be reading zero to trip this. So we would actually have to invert these signals. So put our inverter in there. So that's kind of a mess. Let's redraw that. So switch one, switch two. If this is off, or if this is off, 
and our key switch is on, we're going to get our horn. So that would basically be our circuit put together. Okay. Okay, so that would be the application of putting some chips together to create a functioning circuit. Okay, so that is the end of the lesson for this week. That is the introduction to the basic logic gates. And we are going to uh, now do a little bit of a lab that will give you a bit of an introduction to the breadboard uh, and just how to wire up a breadboard and make some lights come on. Okay, so that is it for this week. A little assignment to go along with this as well. And good luck. Thanks.